Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hello again. Here we are, Mike and Joel with the Growing in Grace podcast. Thanks for coming along. This is part 948 of our <laughs> series on <laughs> why Jesus taught two covenants. Well, not quite that, but... Uh, here we are again. Uh, we got some uh, talk about the rich young ruler to do today. Uh, how's Mr. Kapler doing? Okay, Joel, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to banter with you too much because I realized after that last program, I'm thinking we, we were supposed to already be through the, the, the rich young ruler <laughs> by now. So uh, I'm I'm starting to wonder if we'll get through it on this podcast. So. Let's dive into it, because this is another example, and we will get to some New Covenant stuff eventually, but uh, this is another example, because we've spent a number of weeks on the Sermon on the Mount showing that that was really a, a teaching for Jewish people under the First Covenant, under the law, not for Christians today. That, again, and you, you touched on this the, on the last program, Joel, and that is that what we're not saying that what Jesus is ministering is unimportant or that we just toss it aside. We're not saying any of that. We're just saying that there's much to learn from what Jesus said, but much of his ministry was actually pointed at Jewish people under the Mosaic law. And we can learn from that. It's great to see how we got to where we are. There's there's so much to, to learn about the, the grace of the gospel. So we're not tossing anything aside or diminishing anything that Jesus said or shrugging it off, none of that. It's just that not all of it would be considered an application for the Christian life because it was uh, Old Covenant ministry taking place trying to show Jewish people they were unable to attain to a standard of perfection and righteousness. So with the rich young ruler, Interesting story here, probably one we've talked about before, but let's get some different perspective on it this time. As you said before we started recording, Joel, there's three accounts uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm in Matthew on this one. So the, the rich young ruler, he comes up to Jesus and he says, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And so it's interesting when Jesus is asked a question like this, which is based upon law, it's based upon our doing and our effort, Jesus answered him in the same way that the question was asked to this man who was under the law. So Jesus goes on here. He says, well, if you would like to enter life, keep the commandments. <laughs> so <laughs> we apply these things to Christianity today when we shouldn't be. Jesus said, just keep the commandments, young man. Uh, well, which ones? Good question, Jesus says. He didn't really say that. <laughs> um, he, he said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. Now, remember, there are 613 rules, commands, and statutes under the law, right? Jesus is just giving him a sampling here. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to him, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? And Joel, that, that's the one thing that legalism will always do to people back then and now that question will always be lingering for people trying to establish themselves through what they do. What am I still lacking? And that's the question he asked. I've done all that you said, but what else do I need to do? And Jesus said, well, if you wish to be perfect, go and sell what you possess, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And the question I would ask before I give this back to you, Joel, is how many people today have gone into church and walked out feeling worse than you went in, like this young man did? The reason is the good news was missing. This wasn't good news. And you hear it sometimes on Sundays in church. You walk out of there feeling worse because you were ministered some sort of law that put some sort of demand and responsibility back on you that really should be upon Jesus. Yeah, I mean, think about that. The man asked him a performance-based question, and Jesus answered him with a performance-based answer. You know, the man said, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Well, what is the new covenant answer? What's the good news answer? Well, that's found in Romans 6.23 and elsewhere in the other epistles. Paul said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a gift. We know that eternal life is a gift. All throughout his epistles, it's by grace, through faith, not of works. So, going back to the rich young ruler, what good thing shall I do that I may in, uh, that I may have eternal life? Jesus says, you know the commandments, you know all these things. Uh, and the guy says, all these things I've kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus doesn't say, well, actually, all you need to do is believe. Why doesn't Jesus do that? That's not good. Jesus does not give him the good news. That's one thing we're trying to point out here, is that Jesus was still focused on his old covenant ministry to a man who was under the old covenant and who really was looking to justify himself basically through his performance. Jesus is showing him what he lacks because the guy says, you know, all these things I've kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Well, here, I'll, let me tell you what you still lack. <laughs> if you want to be perfect, and we talked about that from Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Matthew, at the end of uh, Matthew 5, you know, you shall be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Like you were saying, Cap, the man heard this, and he went away sorrowful. Again, Jesus was not ministering to this man the gospel. It wasn't the good news. It was the old covenant. It was performance. It was law trying to show this man that whatever he thinks, he, he's not murdered, he's not committed adultery, he's not stolen, he's not borne false witness, he's honored his mother and his father, he's loved his neighbor as, his, as himself, at least in the young man's eyes. He thought he had kept all of those commandments. <laughs> but when he heard what he really had to do, he went away sad. Again, the new covenant was not being taught here. A Christian teaching was not being given here. It was the old covenant. Yeah, the rich young ruler was missing something that was necessary by the standard of the law. What was that? Perfection. The same Greek word that Jesus used here in this in this story, the same Greek word for perfect, it's the same one we saw at the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus said, you shall be perfect as your Father in heaven. Uh, it's the same thing, and, and this is what he lacked. I mean, imagine being told eternal life would come by keeping the commandments and then receiving confirmation it couldn't be done. That That's what happened <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. And so some people think, well, he had a lot of money and he loved money, and, and so Jesus ministered something special to him. Well, this wasn't just exclusive for the rich young ruler. Remember back in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, you can also find it in Luke 6 and Luke 14, just to name a couple of other places, Jesus told people they needed to give everything away. If anybody came to borrow, uh, give it to them and don't expect anything back. This is what Jesus was trying to show the rich young ruler. He was trying to show him that he really wasn't necessarily loving his neighbor as himself. He, he wasn't being as necessarily as generous as, as what the law demanded him to be. So some people think that uh, Jesus just meant that for this guy. Well, it's, certainly Jesus isn't going to do that. <laughs> I mean, in fact, you, you can find poor people who love money more than a lot of rich people. The, the amount of money sure. you have really doesn't have any bearing on whether you love money or not. Um, in fact, it's very likely this guy, since he was such a law keeper, he probably tithed regularly, right? Uh, may have given away even much more than that, but it still wouldn't be enough by the standard of the law, not for anybody. So it's just interesting to me that the big question here is that there's always going to be something more to do when it comes to the law, and Jesus used just one to turn this guy away. And so it looked like maybe Jesus was slamming the door shut on this guy. Really what he was doing in only a way that Jesus can was simply trying to open another door to reveal that this young ruler needed to discover a different way in order to find what he was looking for. So if you're one of those people who happen to be a, a person who thinks you're, you're, you're a follower of the teachings of Jesus, <laughs> And you think this applies to you, what Jesus said here with keeping the commandments. I assume that you've already sold everything you possess and have <laughs> given it away as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know many, many people who have done that. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I know anyone who has. Uh, well, someone posted once on uh, on our podcast, I think, somewhere, he said he'd done it three times. <laughs> but 
<laughs> then he has to keep going back and doing it. And uh, oh, he, he, ne- he isn't never. That, isn't that like quitting smoking? Yeah, I quit smoking <laughs> lots of times. <laughs> exactly. But he has to keep doing it. And anyway, he he was trying to follow the words of Jesus, which uh, he, he found that he really wasn't able to do. Well, so this guy goes away sad. And then Jesus turns to his disciples and says, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And so here's where we get the Christian application where people will teach that, you see, you can't be greedy. This man was greedy, and it was his wealth. It was his greediness that was keeping him from the kingdom of heaven. Well, in the Jewish culture, I mean, there were laws that said that if you followed the law, God would bless you. God would prosper you. And so wealth was a sign of God's blessings on a person. Wealth was a sign that God was prospering a person. It was a sign that a person was keeping the law, and so God was blessing that person. And so when somebody, when Jesus says it's, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, it's like, what? His disciples, I'm sure, would have gasped. What in the world? The rich people, they're the ones. We're the poor ones who maybe or may not make it. We may or may not make it. But anyway, Jesus says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for the, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. His disciples heard this. They were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? I mean, what? Who in the world can be saved if if even these rich people can't get into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, Jesus looked at them, and here is, this is really where it's all summed up. This is what it comes down to. Jesus looked at them and said, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. See, this has nothing to do with wealth, prosperity, riches. It has nothing to do with keeping the law. It's the fact that it's impossible to enter into the kingdom of heaven through our performance. It's impossible to be saved through our performance, through the law. But with God, all things are possible. And of course, as I said, the gift of God is eternal life. It's God's gift. It can't be about our performance. And having said that, Joel, here's the clincher. Even if the rich young ruler had done that, sold everything he had, given it away, and followed Jesus, it still would not have been enough for him Mm -hmm. to get into the kingdom of heaven. I mean, he could have followed that particular rule and and that instruction, but there was 612 other laws, commandments, and and statutes to follow as well. And, And to do it perfectly, it just couldn't be done. And that's what Jesus was trying to show this guy. Well, next week, we'll talk about a similar story to the rich young ruler. Someone else had come up to Jesus asking what he could do to obtain eternal life. Jesus mentioned some commandments, including love your neighbor as yourself. The man asked, who is my neighbor? And Jesus gave the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, in the church today, we'll try to teach that the Good Samaritan, that's us. Jesus was teaching us to be a Good Samaritan. Well, obviously, if you've listened to us long enough, that's not where we go with that parable. We'll talk about that, the Good Samaritan, and trying to justify yourself through what you do next week on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.